Hello, YouTube. Right off the back, I want to apologize for my uh, my voice. I have a little bit of a head cold. But um, I'm putting together one of these, and I thought I'd make a, a YouTube video. Um, especially since GMRS is getting a little uh, more popular. And I just want to kind of help people out. I got people already reaching out to me, and I love to help. Um, so, you know, I think it's a pretty cool thing. So in front of me here, we got some uh, surplus surplus uh, Motorola PM400s with the cut harnesses. Uh, great little radios. This guy I've been getting them from on eBay has been sending me some radios in great condition. I mean, great condition. I mean, there are hardly any scratches on these things. So, you know, they're, they're in tip-top shape. I've had a bad experience yet. This is my... This, this I have three I ordered so far. But uh, these PM400 are great little radios. Uh, they work great for GMRS. They push 44 watts, um, which is awesome. Uh, you can change your PL tones and stuff on the fly. Uh, it's got the dis nice display panels on these, not the old channel 1, 2, 3, or 4, and so on and so forth. So that's nice. Um, they make a great uh, GMRS radio. I like them. Uh, only thing I think in this air would, that would top this is maybe the CDMs. Uh, they made some pretty good uh, rigs, and and I think they punch somewhere in 48 watts. I've programmed those before, but I haven't owned one. I'd like I'd like to have one, but um, long story short, we're going to set these radios up, uh, programming, um, set one up for a friend and one backup one for myself. Um, I'm going to remove a radio that I have a bad speaker on, get it out to one of my local radio repair guys. And uh, Yeah, and that's a good point. I should bring him up, uh, Mike's Radio Repair. Um, if you guys haven't checked his channel out, check his channel out. If you need repairs on your radio, look him up. Uh, he does fantastic work, and he's very, very knowledgeable. But anyhow, we're going to get to getting these together. I got some harnesses I'm going to be soldering on here. As you can see, they're the cut harnesses, uh, you know, how you buy them. You know, surplus, that's how they remove them from service. They just clip them and sell them. But anyhow, we're going to do... Uh, some solder jobs here, and I'm going to save you the uh, amateur footage of me doing my solder work and kind of do some before and after pictures, and then we'll get some video uh, of me programming these bad boys. So just to show everybody here, um, it's a basic USB cable um, connection here to program. So we're going to jump on here and show you um, the software programming. I will stress that check your COM ports. Okay, for so new users, what I always like to do, not always, but I'm pretty familiar now. Um, so go in there, go to My Computer Administrative Tools. You want to go into your computer management here. Um, and then what you want to do is go into Device Manager. And just make sure, if you're trying to read the radio and it's driving you nuts, uh, just make sure. So I have a uh, US, my USB serial port connected to it, and it shows up as COM port 1. Okay. So we're going to get back in the software here. Okay, so we're back in the software. Um, in this software, you go down to Edit and Preferences. Every software out there will have uh, a COM port check or a way to change the COM port. So right here, we're on one, so it's a match. That is the number one um, problem other than maybe a junk cable. Um, these newer radios, uh, the, the various cables seem to work just fine as, as far as I know. When you get into the older radios and um, with the RSS software, the DAW space software, get the Motorola, uh, actual Motorola cables. We're gonna hit read and we are reading the radio boom 
So right here we have uh, the power range from 25 to 44 watts, 438 to uh, 470 megahertz. Um, that's just all the material there on the radio information. Um, so basically, and again, I'm sorry, I'm making this in short clips to uh, downsize the length of the video. This is kind of how I like to set it up. I usually do short players on one uh, scan and uh, the various uh, settings here. It's how I, I set up these radios. Okay, so um, uh, I went over here to uh, conventional personalities, and, and this is where you add your channels. Uh, they add some various repeater uh, frequencies and stuff put in there. So basically, I went ahead and pre added all my channels here. Now, I didn't do anything over here in the channel specifics yet. Um, I just went ahead and did, uh, did all that to save you all some time. But right in here is where you'll add all that. So right here at 5, five Simplex, um, I have it at Wine Band. Scan list 1. We'll go here. We're going to delete this other frequency that was in it uh, before. And we're going to go to 5500. What's cool about this is we can, uh, we don't want no offset. So we can delete our offset there. So this was probably a repeater frequency. Um, you know, copy and 46255, uh, 46255. Um, we're going to go to there take out all the tones for one simplex and we're gonna copy that over and this has the MDC signal one over here um, which will give you that traditional uh, chirp of Motorola um, on the other end they'll hear that you won't hear it it's not a signaling upon keying the mic that would be over here um, which I don't like to set that up. You can experiment with that yourself. Um, it's a pretty annoying tone that I've used before um, on the transmit signal. But basically, that's how you would do it if you wanted to set up a simplex channel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-program the rest of the simplex over here. And once I get down to the repeater um, channel, I'll jump back on here and show you. Okay, so um, some of them are narrow. Uh, you can switch over to your 20 kilohertz because uh, we can run wide band. Just going run to run this through through the top. Uh, this is going to be our one of our scanless one setting uh, channels. Now, <clears throat> this is our first repeater frequency over here at five five. So we're at 462 megahertz. Um, on the receive um, for duplex operations for on a repeater, um, we want to go to plus five megahertz, and um, we're going to use the travel tone of 143. Uh, just delete that 141.3, and we can go ahead and copy that over. Um, what which is pretty cool. You don't have to retype any of it, and again which gets kind of aggravating in some other softwares. And I, I don't have the patience for doing this stuff. Um, I couldn't do it all day. Uh, now, working on stuff, getting my hands on stuff, eh, totally different ball game. I'm going to put the traditional Motorola chirp in there. And everything looks good. So that's how you set up a, a repeater frequency. Um, the last ones I did was no tone, um, just regular simplex channels. These are your repeater frequencies. Now that'll be the same across the spectrum all the way down from 550, 575, 600, 6, 625, 650, 675, 700, and 725 for all you newbies um, that may be trying to tackle this on your own. But that's it. Um, so I'll uh, we'll get back in here if I think I need to show you anything else and I think there will be something I will pop in here but I'm gonna go through and put the rest of these repeater frequencies in and I'll be back okay uh, 
we are finished. We have all of our GMRS simplex uh, frequencies um, and our repeater frequencies we want to put on this radio. And um, we are ready to go. Um, that uh, That's about it. Go up here and we're going to write to the radio. Boom. All right. We are complete. Good to go. Okay. Thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, comment below. Uh, anybody uh, that needs any help uh, with radio programming, uh, don't be afraid to uh, message me or, or comment below or even email me at my email. Um, but uh, this software is is, is pretty easy it's user friendly once you get in here and do it i can i, I can tolerate uh this software a lot more but again thanks for watching and we'll see you next time